Eyes Wide Shut, Kubrick's last work, is a fascinating film. Though some of the previous films from the American director can broadly be considered as finer achievements, iconic by themselves and standing as some of the best in their genre, Eyes Wide Shut is nevertheless a particularly stunning work of aesthetic refinement, showcasing Kubrick's focused decade-long experience through its subtle, chromatic creativity and dazzling luminosity that has mesmerized its viewers. Though Kubrick had decisively demonstrated his visual acuity in all his other films, Eyes Wide Shut excels in presenting a vibrant, colorful palette that is as titillating as it is ingenious, employing all the devices and features learned from preceding works. This essay will focus on deconstructing its chromatic structure and on Eric's approach to lighting that so successfully turned the film into a visually hypnotic adventure that would inspire many filmmakers to come, with his influence still seen nowadays in contemporary trends. In the films he directed prior to Eyes Wide Shut, whether in monochrome or color, Kubrick already featured expressive lighting and striking hues to reinforce drama and substantiate mood. In Eyes Wide Shut, he takes it up a notch by immersing the film with these elements and boosting them up by increasing the sensitivity of the film reels with a technique called push processing. The result is a highly saturated color range that is extremely vivid, conferring to each scene a throbbing palette that turns into a visual feast for the audience. With Kubrick's well-known meticulous and perfectionist approach to the mise-en-scene, when he's left to gaze with wonder and the eyes free to wander in a kaleidoscopic representation of a disquieting Christmas reverie. If you have seen some of the videos on this channel, by now the mention of an RGB scheme or a tetradic color arrangement will perhaps be somewhat familiar to you, as these were addressed very briefly for example in the essay on Dardenne's The Child. A proper, more comprehensive analysis will come out in the future, but for now it will suffice to say that Kubrick's chromatic composition leaves a particularly conspicuous imprint in this film, as he dedicates to its many frames a conceptual design that displays the four colors that are generally used to create a lively and balanced image in all pictorial mediums. Red, green, blue and yellow are given a platform to connect and enrich the narrative through their visual apprehension, their appearance taken merely as accidental, only if one discards the aforementioned fastidious approach to filmmaking that characterized Kubrick. With him, no prop, object or set are randomly assigned, be it a piece of apparel, a wall, a carpet, a painting, a window, a building facade or a passing taxi. Nothing is placed or framed by accident. Indeed, all visible components of its space are thought out in accordance with their aesthetic perception. Naturally, the ubiquitous indoor Christmas lights with their tinted light bulbs, the neon signs and bright shop fronts also play a role on this chromatic perception, but light will be dealt with shortly later on as well. Nevertheless, once you've noticed this arrangement and cogitate on it, eventually it will become second nature to you whenever you look at the film. For instance, can you assign all the elements of the tetradic color scheme on the following scenes? Eyes Wide Shut doesn't always feature the full arrangement, given that yellow is sometimes taken somewhat as an extra in the more immediate RGB triadic model, which is just as effective even if slightly less energetic. Nonetheless, it's a common design that confers chromatic balance that is still appeasing and seducing for the eyes of the viewer, reflecting as usual a deliberate conception. On the other hand, the film also features scenes overwhelmingly dominated by a specific color, as per Kubrick's style seen in preceding movies, a strong mood establisher that associates hues with explicit frames of minds or perhaps even as a visual leitmotif for characters and actions, but what's more arresting perhaps is the concomitant use of bright orange and blue tones, something which would go on to comprise one of the most recognizable trends in Hollywood during the 2000s and is still seen 20 years afterwards, commonly known as the teal and orange trend. Made infamous afterwards by blockbuster director extraordinaire Michael Bay, but having been experimented before in Full Metal Jacket, in Eyes Wide Shut, teal and orange makes a noticeable appearance that infatuated and mesmerized set designers, cinematographers and directors alike for many years to come after Kubrick's final exposition in the late 90s. It is well known that the blending of strong values of blue and orange, complementary chromatic counterparts that are diametrically opposed on the color wheel, 
makes for an innate compelling and pleasant sight for the human eye, while simultaneously giving the impression of extruding its elements from the composition as if in a sculpted relief, and therefore its combination has been used in art throughout the ages, and can definitely verify at least to a degree for Twilight's ineffable beauty as well, as explored for example on a video concerning Ceylan's opening shot in Once Upon a Time in Anatolia. Before this dyadic color scheme became all the rage in productions from the West and later all over the world, Kubrick made use of its combined formal qualities in eyes wide shut with great efficiency by framing its characters in close relation with the windows that suffused the interiors in intense, captivating and downright mystical moonlight. Kubrick's cinematographer, Larry Smith, has referred to the fact that in creative conjunction with Kubrick, an over-the-top blue light was used as if the actual hue stemming from the outdoors that was in fact much more saturated than natural moonlight, and it's only natural to assume that the purpose behind this application was so that the film's color schemes could have a vigorous and somewhat plausible source. Together with the pervasive use of a teal and orange arrangement before it became an overused aesthetic cliché, Eyes Wide Shut seems to have been also influential on a later trend that currently seems to be present in every major film production, more precisely the use of extensive neon lighting. A later video will evaluate this modern tendency that has managed to make most films look similar to one another, much like the teal and orange craze did a decade before, but it's interesting to note how Kubrick has applied the use of colorful lighting from electric sources in a way that is familiar to what is seen nowadays, taking advantage of the Christmas setting in which the movie unfolds. With this approach, Kubrick in fact managed to get an expressionistic tone that further reinforced the aspect of implicit fantasy that floats over the story. The Christmas backdrop was therefore also the perfect excuse to explore and conceive a set design that would allow for lighting of assorted natures to give an enveloping and almost otherworldly impression that very effectively transfigures the supposedly realistic atmosphere of the film into one of unreality and of dreamlike hallucination. Notice how the vast array of shimmering, and not always necessarily colored Christmas lights, ascribe a sense of illusory perception to the film's world through its hazy and reflective radiance that alluringly envelops the characters. Eyes Wide Shut features many other enticing cinematographic traits, such as its propensity for long takes, thorough use of steady cam shots, detailed blocking, and the keen eye for composition, that turn the film into a lush visual and aesthetic experience, but I hope this deconstruction focused on color and lighting has provided at least a more comprehensive understanding of one of the film's defining characteristics. Make sure to check the channel for other videos on movies that transcend borders and periods, and feel free to leave a like or comment, or to share this with other people that might be interested in Kubrick's art. Thank you for listening and see you next time.